Welcome to Understanding Building Classifications. The focus of this presentation is building classifications, which are essential to understanding and using the NCC correctly. There is one set of building classifications in the NCC, and they are used within all volumes. You have probably referred to different building classifications as you go about your work, or heard others talking about them. For example, talking about whether a building was a Class 1A building, or a Class 1B building, or discussing whether a particular kind of building met the requirements for a Class 6 building. Most of the requirements in the NCC apply to a specific classification or specific classification of buildings, so you will need to be able to identify which classifications any relevant building belongs to and know where to go when you need an authoritative decision on which classification is most appropriate for a building when there are arguments for it falling under more than one classification. That's what you will learn about in this presentation. What you will learn, where to find information about building classifications, the 10 building classifications in the NCC, building classifications for mixed-use buildings, and buildings with more than one classification, applying this to different types of buildings. Where to find information about building classifications in the NCC. Building classifications are part A6 of the government requirements in each volumes. The text is identical in all volumes, as is all of the governing requirements. If they know, have, read the information on building classifications in one volume, then they have read what it says in all other volumes as well. Part A6 contains the formal definitions of each building classification and some explanatory information, which discusses distinctions between the classification and gives a lot of useful examples. The Buildings Classifications handout is another source they can use. It contains more explanations and examples that can be helpful, especially when trying to distinguish between two possible classifications. It is available from the ABCB website. So what are the NCC building classifications? Buildings are built to serve different purposes, so the way that they are designed and constructed also varies. Therefore, the requirements that they must meet also vary in terms of things like size, space, facilities, light, how you enter them and exit from them, fire safety, and structural strength. Building classifications within the NCC reflect this variation in the purpose of different buildings and the performance requirements that they must meet. Consider a single family home versus an apartment block versus a backpacker hostel versus a hotel. We might sleep, relax, and otherwise live in all of them, but a single family home would not successfully fill the purpose of a hotel or backpacker hostel nor will it make for comfortable accommodation for multiple families. An office block versus a warehouse versus a factory versus a small retail shop front. People might work in all of these buildings, but the work they are doing varies along with the number of people who might work in each one, the number of visitors we might get, and the other materials we might keep in the space. A typical office block would make an inconvenient warehouse and a warehouse would be an uncomfortable office or shop front in most instances. Because buildings have different purposes, they also need to perform differently as a structure. They will be different sizes and shapes. They will need different numbers, sizes and shapes of rooms. They will need different amounts of light and warmth and will need different facilities such as bathrooms, electrical connections and lifts. They will vary in their energy and water use their requirements for safety and security, including ways to get in and out of the buildings, and they will vary by their need to resist fire and their structural strength. Consider the facilities required for safe evacuation of a single-storey shop retail building versus a multi-storey office block. Any door or window in a single-storey shop may be able to be used for escape from a fire or other hazard so there are often multiple routes for evacuation. The same is not true for a multi-storey building, where the windows are usually not able to be used for evacuation. This means 
that dedicated escape paths, usually fire stairs, are needed in multi-storey buildings, but not usually in single-storey buildings. The number of people who are likely to be in each building are also very different, resulting in different requirements for services to suppress a fire in order to allow time for people to escape. A hospital versus a school hall. Facilities to allow for safe evacuation of people from the building would be different in these two buildings because of the assumption that a large number of people in a hospital might have difficulty evacuating on their own. They may not be able to walk, use stairs, or move without bringing equipment with them, while evacuating a school hall of primary school aged children might not be as easy as evacuating adults, we can assume most of them will be able to walk out of the building without assistance, although they will probably need shepherding by adults. The NCC manages this variation in building purpose and requirements by grouping buildings by their function and use, assigning a building classification to each grouping and specifying particular performance requirements for particular classifications of buildings. Subclassifications, e.g. 1A, 1B, are treated as separate classifications. So effectively, there are 16 building classifications, subclassifications. A performance requirement might apply to class 1A or class 1B, or it might apply to class 1, which means that it applies to both class 1A and class 1B. Volume 1 is usually thought of as covering the commercial building classifications. Volume 2 is thought of as covering the residential building classifications. They may have heard people in the industry referring to Volume 2 as the housing provisions. This separation is not hard and fast. In particular, there are some disability access provisions in Volume 1 that may also apply to Class 1B buildings, which are otherwise covered in Volume 2. How well do you know the difference between building classifications? Class 1. Class 1A, single dwelling, house, detached, row, terrace, duplex. Class 1B, boarding house, guest house, hostel less than 300 metres squared, usually fewer than 12 people. Class 10, Class 10A, non-habitable building, shed, carport, garage. Class 10B, structure, fence, mast, antenna, retaining wall. Pool. Class 10C. Private bushfire shelter. Associated with a Class 1A building only. Class 2. Class 2. Apartment building. Typically multi-storied. Multi-unit residential building where people live above and below each other. Also single-storied dwellings with a common space between them, such as a garage. Class 3. Class 3 residential building. Not a Class 1 or 2 building or a Class 4 part of a building. For long-term or transient living by unrelated people. Hotel, motel, hostel or guest house, dormitory, workers' quarters, residential care facility. Class 4. Class 4 residential part of a non-residential building. Could be a sole dwelling or a residence, e.g. caretaker's residence. Can only be located in a Class 5 to 9 building. Class 5 office building, used for professional or commercial purposes. Offices of lawyers, accountants, architects, government agencies. Class 6, class 6 building used for the sale of retail goods or services. Retail to the public, not wholesale. Shop or shopping centre, barber or hairdresser. Market, showroom, funeral parlour. Class 7, class 7A. Car park, Class 7B, storage or warehouse, used as a warehouse, warehouse display of goods or produce. Class 8, Class 8, process type building, a building where a process or handicraft is carried out for trade, sale or gain. Factory, mechanics workshop, abattoir or food processing plant, small or large laboratory. Class 9, Class 9A healthcare building, Public or private, hospital, daycare, surgery, nursing home. Class 9B, assembly building, school, children's centre, sports centre, nightclub, transport hub. Class 9C, residential care building, aged or residential care facility. 
What class is a hardware store? Equals class six. Furniture factory. Equals class eight. Mosque. Equals class nine B. Bed and breakfast. Equals class one B. What class is a kindergarten? Equals class nine B. Shearer's hut. Equals class three. Multi-storied car park. Equals class seven A. Residential care facility. Equals class nine C. Which of the following is a class one A building? Single detached dwelling above a single garage for that dwelling. An apartment complex. A row of terrace houses with common firewalls between them, each with an unattached garage. A three-storey building with a shared underground garage and a residential sole occupancy unit on each storey, not including the garage. Options one and three are both Class One A buildings. Options two and four are both Class Two buildings. Which class is each of the following buildings? Accommodation for visiting doctors in a rural hospital. Six single dwellings on one block that are used for holiday stays. A row of terrace houses with common firewalls between them, and a common underground garage. A caretaker's flat in a warehouse or office building. Option one is a class three building. Option two is a class one B building. Option three is a class two building. Option four is a class four part of a building. What about volume three? Volume one covers class two to nine buildings. Volume two covers class one to ten buildings. Volume three covers plumbing and drainage requirements for all building classifications. Mixed use buildings. Each part is classified separately according to its purpose. Each part must meet all the performance requirements for its particular classification. Generally. If a part of a building that has a different purpose is less than ten percent of the total floor area of the storey it is on, then it is not given a separate classification. The classification of the rest of the building or space it is within applies. In the NCC, this is provided as an exemption to clause A six G one. For example, in a single storey warehouse with an office that is fifteen percent of the total floor space, the office space has a separate classification. Class five, and that space must meet the performance requirements of a class five building. If the office space was only five percent of the total floor space, then it would be classified, along with the rest of the warehouse, as a class seven B building, and would have to meet the performance requirements for a class seven B building. If the warehouse had two stories, and the office was fifteen percent of the ground floor, but only seven point five percent of the total floor space, then the office space would be considered a class five part of the building, because it is the percentage of the floor space of the story it is on that matters, not the total percentage. The ten percent rule doesn't apply to laboratories. A laboratory, usually a class eight building, is considered to have a high fire risk, must be appropriately managed. Treating a laboratory like another class of building would potentially mean that fire hazard management measures might be inadequate for the risk the laboratory poses to the users of the building. A sole occupancy unit in a class two or three building, or a class four part of a building, when any space is used for people to live in, the NCC mandates performance requirements to manage fire risks and ensure adequate sound insulation. Treating an SOU like another class of building could mean reducing these requirements, which would result in a living space that failed to comply with requirements and lacked necessary amenities. Nine B, early childhood centres. Early childhood centres generally pose a different set of risks, especially in emergency evacuation, than other building classifications. Treating an early childhood centre like another class of building could mean that the fire safety measures do not match the risk and occupancy characteristics of this building classification. More discussion of the ten percent rule and exceptions to the rule can be found in the explanatory information in Part A six of any volume of the NCC. What about a shopping centre with shops in the ground floor? And two floors of car parking above, equals class six, 
retail shops and Class 7A car park. A church with an attached priest's residence equals Class 9B church and Class 4 part of a building residence. A hospital with a childcare centre equals Class 9A healthcare building and Class 9B childcare centre equals assembly building. A boiler room or machinery room in the basement car park of an office building equals Class 7A as no special classification is needed for a boiler room or machinery room, regardless of their size or percentage of the floor space. However, there are specific performance requirements for the construction of these kinds of rooms, e.g. fire separation requirements. See Volume 1 for the specific performance requirements. If you have time and the trainees are interested, you could ask the trainees to look at Volume 1 and find the location of these special provisions for boiler rooms, etc. Can a whole building have multiple classifications? Yes, it's possible if the building is designed to serve multiple purposes. If a builder wants to build a building that has flexibility in its use, i.e. can be used for different purposes. For example, a building with a number of units in an industrial park. The building owner, developer, might want to be able to sell or rent the units in the building for a variety of purposes such as office space for small businesses, class 5, retail space for businesses that sell to public, class 6, storage space, class 7B. This is permissible but the building must meet all the specific requirements for any class and the most stringent requirements for all of the classes. For example, a storage space might not need to have a lot in the way of facilities, such as bathrooms, because typically few people work in these spaces. However, an office or retail space requires a minimum number of bathrooms, determined by the expected number of users and size because there is an expectation that some people will typically spend long periods of time in the space and that a larger number of people will use the space. Therefore, the units would need to meet the more stringent facility requirements for Class 5 and Class 6 buildings. What if a building's classification isn't obvious? Building classification is a risk management issue. The risk associated with the building's intended purpose needs to be assessed so that the building can be classified appropriately and built to meet the most appropriate performance requirements. When deciding on a building classification, the appropriate authority reviews the building proposal and might consider the intended purpose of the building and or different parts of the building, building classification that the building most closely resembles, likely fire load of the building, likely risks to the safety health and amenity of the people who might use the building, relevant decisions or determinations by appeals courts in the relevant state or territory. Note that not all appeals court decisions set precedents. The definition of appropriate authority is slightly different in New South Wales. Some building regulatory authorities in some states and territories issue their own guidelines for building classifications. A building surveyor is one of the main appropriate authorities to classify a building but it could also be a council, and this should be confirmed with the local regulator. How would you classify a retail shop with a residence at the back? Retail building equals class 6. A residence equals class 4, part of a building. How would you classify a building that could be used as a warehouse or for light industrial activities? Both class 7A and class 8. How would you classify a building with squash courts, a small sports association office, and a cafe taking up 30% of the building? Sports centre equals class 9B. Cafe equals class 6. Office equals class 9B. What class is a pottery studio equals class 8. Service station equals class 6. Railway station equals class 9B. Warehouse equals equals class 7B. True or false? You are building a small hostel, class 1B, on the coast. You can find all the relevant performance requirements in volume 2 of the NCC. If you chose false, yes, that's right. 
you need to refer to Volume 3 for plumbing and drainage provisions. Also, some of the disability access and fire provisions in Volume 1 may apply to Class 1B building. A boarding house or hostel could be a Class 1B building or Class 3 building. What key factor determines its class? Height in stories. A Class 3 building is typically a high-rise building, while a Class 1B building is typically a low-rise building. Who will live, stay there? A Class 3 building is designed to accommodate unrelated people, while a Class 1B building may accommodate related or unrelated people. How many people can it accommodate and total floor area? A Class 1B building would normally not accommodate more than 12 people and would have a total floor area of no more than 300 square metres. If bigger than this, it would be classed as a Class 3 building. If you chose option 3, yes, that's right. If you chose options 1 or 2, that's incorrect. Both Class 1B and Class 3 buildings are designed to accommodate unrelated people. True or false? A Class 1A residence cannot be built over or under another structure of any other class, except for a private garage. If you chose true, yes, the statement is true. If a residence is built over any other type of structure, it would be a sole occupancy unit of a Class 2 building. This is the case, even if the other structure is a common garage space. Summary Class 2-9 to nine buildings NCC Volume 1 Commercial provisions Class 1 and 10 buildings NCC Volume 2 Housing provisions Volume 1 disability access provisions may also apply Plumbing and drainage provisions for all building classes NCC Volume 3. Key points. Building classifications are found in the governing requirements, Part A6 in all volumes. A mixed-use building may have parts that have different classifications. The 10% rule usually applies. An entire building can have more than one classification if it is designed or intended for more than one potential use. If building classification is unclear, refer to the appropriate authority in the relevant state or territory. Thank you for your time. That brings our presentation on understanding building classifications to a close. If you'd like more information, please visit abcb.gov.au.